Hello everybody, welcome back to another video. I'm hoping you guys are all having a fantastic day. <clears throat> so as you can tell by the title of this video, today is going to be an episode or upload on who's most likely to see snow this fall, but by region. I've made a video already like this, <clears throat> but the title was who's, who's the most likely to see snow this fall, and that was it. And uh, <clears throat> I made this video previous in the fall, and this is basically, uh, in the previous falls, and this is basically uh, what I consider a competition between the states and in each region, like the Midwest, Northeast, which state will be, you know, the snowiest, maybe Virginia, maybe West Virginia, you know, um, or maybe New York, so that's basically what this video is going to be, you know, answering or doing. I apologize if <clears throat> I sound a little bit uh, stuffy, I do have a cold, nothing too serious, just a little cold, <clears throat> and, you know, I was already getting over it, it was like a one day thing, but then today, you could, I don't know if you could still hear, but it's pouring, and I just came back from school, literally, it rained from about 9 to 12 o'clock <clears throat> and uh, you know in the morning it stopped it was almost sunny for about three hours and as soon as school ended it started raining again slowly picked up and picked up and then a thunderstorm arrived and we got slambasted by heavy rain as we were exiting out of the bus um, this was a public bus so it wasn't you know close to your house or anything I had to walk around a mile in downpouring rain so I'm back being sick basically um, I mean my stuff in my backpack was completely wet everything my Chromebook my every all my electronics I don't know if it will still work my, I was completely soaked but you know whatever I mean at this point it's not I mean if the, the Chromebook of the school breaks they need to cover it because it was an accident not my fault so <clears throat> as you can see I have a cough and of course mother nature punished me for something I did and also, I'm sorry about going on this rant, but also listen to your mother always. Just that's good advice. Always listen to your mother because she wanted to give me an umbrella today. I said no because it's not going to rain in the afternoon because the National Weather Service called for it. Well, look, my mom's a better forecaster than the National Weather Service. That's how puny and pathetic they are. So sorry about that, but uh, yes, do consider subscribing and uh, liking this video. <clears throat> and yeah, it would really help out a lot. So right now, we're, we're going to talk about the Enzo Outlook Southern, the Enzo Outlook, El Nino Southern Oscillation Analogs and Previous, which means basically previous falls to this year and a NOAA Seasonal Outlook for this year, which I factor in the least since it's usually the least off. <clears throat> so for in, or in order to get into the Enzo, <clears throat> we need to first discuss, okay, well, we need to first and, you know, show you what that even is, what's that even based off of. So the Enzo El Nino Southern Oscillation <clears throat> is based off like, are these cooler waters right here. And these cool waters are off the South American coast. And, you know, right now they are cool, <clears throat> which would mean it's a La Nina neutral pattern. And uh, sometimes they're above average. That is an El Nino. Whether they're below average, like right now, it, it's a La Nina. But notice how it's also warm across further across the Pacific Ocean. So that's indicating <clears throat> that's indicating a neutral pattern since uh, it's not a full La Nina and it's not a La El Nino either. So it's more of a neutral pattern right now. Uh, we just came from an El Nino. And, you know, uh, I want to show you now, basically, the forecast. You can see this is by <clears throat> by NOAA and updated 11th of uh, July. <clears throat> this was actually should be updated. <clears throat> um, I haven't updated this because I'm using the same information I used for that one video that I uploaded earlier. Who is most likely to see snow this fall? And that was it. Uh, but... Uh, the updated information now, uh, <clears throat> it says that, you know, it's the Enzo neutral is occurring <clears throat> and the favorite to emerge, you know, that did happen and the El Nino is gone. So, and if there was, if this was a new graphic, you'd show you basically similar things, just higher confidence for neutral occurring. So, what does a neutral winter pattern mean? <clears throat> you could see cold across the northeast, especially the north and obviously the northeast <clears throat> but the northwest may not get too much cold air with this notice how that jet stream is kind of <clears throat> pushed to the side <clears throat> and this allows this uh, jet stream to oh my god uh, dive down uh, more at a you know positive or at a negative slope rather than with a la nina <clears throat> this high pressure uh, this blocking high pressure wouldn't be as strong which is uh, causing this jet stream to be like this in the first place for neutral pattern. A La Nina would be more, you know, more, uh, more slopey and not as, you know, uh, as uh, aggressive. But you could see, uh, basically that this is the winter pattern and 
for the fall pattern, <clears throat> uh, we will be uh, experiencing similar thing. I mean, this technically is just saying the Enzo winter pattern, but the neutral um, fall pattern is very similar. I already showed. I think I will show this later on in a video what the impacts of a neutral but for fall are, and they're very similar. Um, and you know, most of the time, <clears throat> snow occurs in the fall in November. So, and November is usually calculated into the winter pattern of these forecasts. So. Hopefully you understand it. This doesn't change too much, but I think I will show you uh, the neutral years. And yes, I did. <clears throat> so basically, what this is, you can see, is August through November at the bottom, and that is obviously <clears throat> uh, August is not fall. I don't know why I included August in there. Uh, it was kind of a mistake. But even if I excluded August, it's not like if it's some sort of month that was extremely chilly with neutral pattern and uh, you know completely biased the, this forecast no august was actually the warmest out of all of them but september october and november resulted in <clears throat> similar results as you can see right here very chilly especially across the north northeast and eastern part of the country <clears throat> and a little bit warmer across the west since i just shoved the shoved aside um you know causing more of a cold air to spill into the east rather than the west <clears throat> and this is now i think <clears throat> yeah and i'll I basically show you here <clears throat> that this is uh, due to this high pressure and right now uh you know basically this high pressure what it does is when it's above average it develops <clears throat> the air warm air rises and it just sends this <clears throat> this jet stream this polar jet stream during winter time you know it tries going through but it takes a path of least resistance like most things do in science <clears throat> and you could see you know, when describing atoms or molecules or uh, currents or uh, currents or, or or voltages, and you can see that uh, this uh, it's gonna basically take something like that because it, once it's over to that region, wants to go back into its <clears throat> into its pattern, and most likely, usually there are storms coming from the north, or there's some influence, so it doesn't have the ability just to go straight like that. It goes back down, and that obviously allows more chillier air to come in and you know you may be wondering well will this happen this year yes because <clears throat> these this picture is actually a sea surface temperature anomaly of what is occurring right now across the ocean and it has been maintaining itself and most likely throughout the winter it will remain at least into <clears throat> some kind of form you know it may weaken <clears throat> but it may intensify so we'll just have to see about that but that's a whole fun of weather there's a lot of <clears throat> things that are unknown and this is basically september through november of <clears throat> several years that had similar springs Okay. <clears throat> and summers similar to 2019 this year and I compiled what they looked like and this is what they turned out to <clears throat> obviously this is uh, very uh, you know showing a lot of cold I don't think it will be this cold because uh, there's I mean again with that a neutral pattern <clears throat> that is most likely to form I think the western part of the country should be a little bit <clears throat> warmer but I'm still not sure about the northwest guys <clears throat> if you live in the northwest uh, I do think that there's a good ch you know a fair chance not maybe not a good but a fair chance for a La Nina to develop you know, <clears throat> and that could still uh, bring in some cooler temperatures for the northwest while if it was just a neutral it would exclude the northwest but I do think the southwest and the south central states maybe across here would be still <clears throat> above average or close to normal <laughs> sorry about that <clears throat> but so this slipped here but I think the eastern and northeast United States will ha will have a good chance of being <clears throat> below average. So that is, you know, still set. And uh, basically the criteria for being similar to this year's uh, summer and spring was wet summer, cool, or uh, wet spring, cool spring, medium summer, you know, depending on the location. And I didn't include it in this video how I made the, those comparisons because I made s s several previous videos on that. <clears throat> and this is basically the precipitation of all the summers. <laughs> you can see it was a little bit or quite a bit above average <clears throat> across <clears throat> the southeast, but anywhere else, you know, I mean, you can see it was, uh, this was a fall, by the way, the fall, you know, what the, I don't know if I included this, but what the spring and summer looked like, basically what correlated to the fall after. And you can see um, not that much impressive stuff about the precip anomalies at all. But uh, that's not important because, you know, as I say, in order to get a chilly or a snowy fall, you don't need... You could be a b below average precip as long as it's cold. Some of that, even a rain shower, could bring up to an inch or two of, <clears throat> of snow. I mean, if it's like a strong band and it snows for two, three hours. So, uh, you know, it could be any type of disturbance. Now, this is the final thing you've been waiting for. And this is who will see the snowiest. 
<clears throat> fall by region and this is what I think so let me explain to you guys each region one by one so let's start off in the Midwest you can see I have Minnesota winning the competition in the Midwest <clears throat> and I think that's uh, because the, the the cold air will be the most abundant and uh, attainable by the snow uh, for especially during the fall <clears throat> and uh, you know during you know November October I don't think Iowa and Illinois will see more snow than Minnesota and this is not you know more snow uh, based on inches but compared to average I think Illinois and Iowa may see above average I think most states will but Minnesota I think will see even more above average since <clears throat> at that time of the year the cold air you know if it's above average it could be warm but if it's below average it could be chilly whoever says Illinois if it's above average it could be hot below average it could be um, you know mild not necessarily cold and you can see that uh, Minnesota, I think, will see the most snow. Wisconsin is number two. I think there will be several big snowstorms that will occur, or at least big in terms of the snow amounts across Minnesota and Wisconsin. And lake effect, I think, will be fairly above average for Michigan, which is that's why that's my top three states. Now let's move on to the Northwest. Montana is number <clears throat> number one state because <clears throat> it's furthest to the uh, to the east and I think that jet stream will be you know clipping it enough to bring some of that cold air in and some of that snow will transit rain will transition to snow Idaho is number three because it's the furthest to the west and Wyoming is number two <clears throat> because it's um, not as far to the east I mean it is you can see the lines basically right there but um, uh, Montana is closer to <clears throat> the north and the northeast it's more to the north and northeast in Wyoming uh, and if we were to look at the southwest uh, you could see that uh, Utah is number three because it's the furthest to the west. But we, you know, but without being, <clears throat> I, when I say furthest to the west, it's you know not like California, Nevada. It's furthest to the west within a region or area where the cold could still get to it. Colorado is number one. I don't think it will be a super snowy year for Colorado. Though if Alania develops, it could be, but I think it will be still rather chilly and it could produce some early snowfall or above average. And then New Mexico, I think. <clears throat> we'll see uh, number two for some snowier conditions. Though I don't think it will necessarily be above average for the southwest, but in terms of you know all the states in the southwest, I think Colorado, New Mexico, and Utah will see the most or closest to average. <clears throat> now let's look at the northeast. Let's, uh, let's just stay at the south. So the south consisted of Oklahoma, Texas, Louisiana, Arkansas, and um, uh, that was basically only four states I think in this region because it was kind of weird and. <laughs> you can see I took Arkansas number one. I got furthest to the east and a little bit further to the north than Texas. Oklahoma is further to the west, so I don't think it will get as cold as with uh, you know some of these Arctic shots that will come in and affect it from the northeast mainly. And in Texas, I think number three because <clears throat> some of the cold air could definitely affect it, especially if it's a big one and some snow could occur you know during the fall. And you know usually um, Oklahoma, Arkansas don't see snow during the fall. Yes, I know, but uh, you know I mean it's if it does, then I think those three states have the best chances. That's kind of let's put it that way. <clears throat> and you know we're talking up until December first. That's technically fall, meteorological fall. So you know we could see some snow in November that comes across the panhandle of Texas, Oklahoma. That's definitely happened before. And the southeast consisted of states of Mississippi, Alabama, Georgia, Tennessee, South Carolina, North Carolina, <clears throat> Kentucky, and Florida. And I put North Carolina number one, Tennessee number two, South Carolina number three. Again, North Carolina furthest to the north and east. Tennessee, you know, furthest to the north by, I don't know, furthest to the north, but it's just more attainable over the cold rather than South Carolina, because South Carolina is closer to the ocean, so it could get affected by some of the, the warm ocean temperatures, which could dwindle the snow amounts. And then again, you know, fall up until December. I don't know if they will see snow, but these are the highest uh, locations, or the, the high states have the highest chance. And now the Northeast, you know, uh, all those states, I don't even want to name them, there's so many, but you can see New York is number one, Vermont is number two, and Pennsylvania is number three. The reason Pennsylvania is number three and then New York is number one, you know, they're right next to each other. Pennsylvania is right above Lake Erie. Lake Erie is warm. It's going to protect some of the cold blasts of air from coming in. They're not too strong, and that's going to dwindle at some of the snow amounts during the fall. New York, uh, number one, because... You can see it's just I think there will be a lot of locations that will be placed right there and it's also furthest to the west but um, you know that's you may be thinking that's a negative because that's what I've been saying this whole time but you can see that I think the coldest air will be doing something like this so at a certain point 
you know, when you, uh, you know, when you factor in the East Coast, you want it to be in that range. So that's why you see here across the West, it was favor favorable to be across the, more towards the East. Now it's more favorable to be across the West if you talk about the Northeast. So Vermont's number two and New York is number one. That's what decided it. So thank you guys so much for watching. Consider liking the video. Consider subscribing to this channel. I'll catch you all guys in the next episode. See ya. Bye.